I've just been given 24 billion pounds. So I'm going to invest it all in non-league clubs, giving each one a billion pounds like any sane person would. Over time, this sort of moolah should propel at least 20 of these teams to the Premier League, at which point I will become worse than the Glazers and demand every club is sold for £5 billion and I make some insane profit. The front runners are Chesterfield and AFC Fylde, who have secured promotion in Season 1. With all the money in the world to spend, in theory, they should be reaching the Premier League by Season 5. However, I am leaving these clubs to run themselves. Some are going to be sensible, investing in the training facilities, in youth teams and sensible transfers. Others are going to spaff it on a brand new stadium and sign the most expensive has-been players possible on their way to try and get promoted. And that seems to be happening already. Fylde have spent just shy of 20 million in their bid to get promoted, which seems incredibly excessive. That is until you look at Chesterfield, who have spent just shy of 280 million pounds. What the hell have they they possibly spent that on. I've temporarily made myself the Chesterfield manager to look at their finances. And there seems to be a huge spike in expenditure in May. Apparently they spent £251 million on other which are things like advertising, supplies, and other general expenses. So either they're buying some premium fountain pens for the club secretary, or they are embezzling some serious cash. And the thing is, it's not just Chesterfield doing this. Altrincham, Barnet, Bromley, Eastley, Halifax, Kidderminster, Maidenhead, Oldham, Oxford City, Rochdale, and Wellstone have all spent in the region of 280 million. So if those clubs continue to burn the cash that they have done in season one, they will be bankrupt by the end of season four. So let's see if they are still spending as big in season two. Aldershot and York have got themselves promoted and poor Dagenham and Redbridge lost the title on goal difference and then lost the playoff final. Luckily, relegated Crawley and Harrogate didn't make a mockery of all the teams we've given a billion pounds to and neither did promoted South Shield and Eastbourne Borough. But Scunthorpe and Yeovil did, meaning Maidenhead and Weldstone have been relegated. Both of these teams spent £280 million last season, and whilst they haven't spent quite as much this season, Weldstone have £565 million left, and Maidenhead have £563 million. In two seasons, they've spent almost half a billion pounds. All to get relegated, it's absolutely mental. This time, it's a little easier to explain, as Maidenhead spent £188 million in corporation tax, and that does actually check out. Corporation tax in the UK is 25%, and we basically gave them a profit of 1 billion. Last season, they spent about 250 million pounds, meaning that they had a total profit of 750 million pounds, and 25% of 750 million is 187.5 million. So the corporation tax is about right. This should be the only season with a massive tax bill, but other clubs have also been affected and a lot of them are sitting around 500 to 600 million. That's right, you come to the video for Football Manager, but you subscribe to the channel for accountancy. Or maybe you subscribe to Football Manager, but like the video for accountancy. In League Two, Fylde have come 14th, but Chesterfield have finished rock bottom, which is even worse when they are outspending every other team in the division. Although maybe some of the players are actually letting them down. Top earner Dylan Stevenson is on 10,000 pounds per week and only scored four goals this season. So this isn't quite going to plan early doors, but it's going to take some time to adjust to the money. So I think by season 10, we'll definitely see some clubs in the Premier League. Or not, because there aren't any there which is a, a slight concern. However, AFC Fylde could be there soon. They've just finished seventh place in the championship, a point away from the playoffs. Oh my word, in 10 seasons, they spent almost 700 million pounds. Although they are doing it the right way, they have invested it heavily into their training and youth facilities. They're also paying this guy 165,000 pounds per week. He is nowhere near worth that. His current ability is 132 out of 200 which means he's not very good. Ah, there is a reason they are spending so much. They have had one season in the Premier League. Look at this graph, all the way from the eighth division to the very top. Well, not quite the very top. They did come 19th in the Premier League, but they were only three points away from staying up. 
But getting a team to the Premier League within 10 seasons is actually really impressive, so I am very proud of AFC Fylde. I'm sure this is just the start of plenty of teams getting there. In terms of transfer fees, things started off fairly slowly for Fylde, but then they began to ramp up as they climbed the divisions. And last season, they spent a grand total of 98 million. 29 million of that was on Finn Stevens, a 30-year-old right-back who's okay. Whoever is running their scouting and accounting department is not doing a good job. We've got Bromley, York, Chesterfield and Aldershot in League One and Bromley lost in this season's playoff semi-finals. They still have around £500 million to spend, so they're saving their money well whilst also investing heavily in the facilities, which is great to see. However, they do have a transfer embargo right now for failing to comply with financial fair play regulations for two years in a row. I assume it's because their salaries are way more than 60% of the club's turnover, how much money they bring in every single season. Although they're only 10th in the League One salary list, paying 7.36 6 million pounds a year, so it won't be wildly over 60%. However, York will be spending massively over 60% of their turnover on wages, as they're paying 64 million pounds a year out to their players. They've got five players earning over 100,000 pounds per week in League One. Now, I am very confused because York have a turnover of 12.9 million pounds, but financial fair play allows them to spend 1.8 million pounds per week on wages, of which they are under right now, so they aren't failing financial fair play. Bromley need to hire the York accountants. They're doing a superb job somehow. In League 2, we have Barnet, Ebbsfleet, Woking, Eastley and Maidenhead, meaning in 10 seasons, we have 10 out of 24 teams in the Football League. And I don't think that's a very good return for 24 billion. Although next season, Altrincham and Oldham are going to be joining them. So we'll have 50% of the teams promoted. Oh my word. Altrincham's top earners are on £73,000 per week in the fifth division. So hopefully by season 25, all 24 non-league clubs will be in the Football League. Let's start off with the Premier League, where there isn't a single non-league team. The biggest shock actually is Man City finishing in 12th place. The good news is we have three clubs in the championship, but the bad news is they're all in the bottom half. Barnet may have come 21st, but they did at least finish 14 points ahead of Reading in 22nd. Bromley also have a 12 point deduction for being in administration, which shouldn't happen if you have a billion pounds in the bank account or 122 million pounds in the bank account. To be fair, it looks like the administration process happened mid season and the new chairman may have put in 100 million pounds or so. Looking at the history, they've had one chance in the championship playoffs, but obviously didn't win it. As for Fylde, they haven't been back to the Premier League since we last saw them there, but they have remained a staple championship side. As for Barnet, this was their first season in the championship. So hopefully these three sides stay in the championship and can make a promotion push soon. We've got seven clubs in League One, but the most impressive club is AFC Berry. Of course, the Phoenix club of Berry who went out of business a few seasons ago. Wellstone lost in the playoffs this season, but they still have 320 million pounds to spend after investing heavily into training facilities. And they're being fairly sensible, only spending £6 million a season on wages, compared to Aldershot's 16 and Plymouth's 27 million. League 2 features eight teams, including Solihull Moors and Rochdale, who are heading up a league next season. Ignore Dagenham in 24th place. But as one team goes down, two are coming up. Mini will have 19 former non-league clubs in the Football League. This means that 19 clubs have had to come down, including the likes of MK Dons and Yeovil in the relegation zone. And it gets even better looking in the National League North and South. In the Vanarama North, which is England's sixth division, you've got teams like Salford, Port Vale, Morecambe, Bolton and Harrogate. And in the South, you've got teams like Cambridge and Crawley. Back up in the National League, the five remaining teams to get promoted are Oxford City, Hartlepool, Woking, Halifax and of course Dagnum when they come back down. However, Oxford City are the only one of those teams to have never been promoted from the National League, which given the circumstances of this video is actually mental. So if by season 50 they are still in the National League, I will be fuming. Although I think I'm more crossed at the fact we still don't have a non-league side in the Premier League, but I am a big fan of Man United almost being relegated and Man City not even being in the division. Luckily, we will have a team in the Premier League next season as Bromley beat Man City 
opportunity to get promoted. They've actually had a few spells in the Premier League now, with their best finish being 15th. And at this stage, they only have £2 million in the bank account, so they could do with the Premier League TV money. Maidenhead and Oldham are also in the Championship, who have similar amounts of money in their bank accounts. So it turns out £1 billion might only last about 50 years. Fylde and Chesterfield are heading up to the Championship next season, but there are only four other former non-league clubs in this division, which is one less than 25 seasons ago. And we only have five clubs in League Two, down from eight 25 seasons ago. Worse still, three clubs we didn't give money to are actually in the league. This means the rest are down in the National League or worse, below that. Oxford City are one of them in the Vanarama National League South, with just £688,000 to their name. I feel like a disappointed parent. I'm not cross, I'm just disappointed. This season, older shots have been relegated from the National League, and you can tell why. They just haven't put any money into any of their training facilities. Instead, they pay big wages on players to try and get them at the leagues, and it just didn't work out. So all of our hopes now ride on Bromley, who have just come 14th in the Premier League, their highest ever finish in season 51. So I'm gonna come back in season 100, and I I fully expect them to have won at least 20 titles. Ah, well, the Bromley aren't in the Premier League, but Maidenhead are, if you ignore the fact they've just been relegated. But at least we have seen a second team in the Premier League. Instead, Bromley are 10th in the Championship, where they're joined by Chesterfield, Kidderminster and Altrincham. It turns out Bromley have spent 27 seasons in the Premier League, and that 14th place finish that we saw was the highest they ever got. In fact, I've looked through all the stats and none of the 24 teams we gave a billion pounds to won any major silverware. The best they've done is produce two runners-up in the FA Cup, and that was only in the last 25 years. It could be worse though, you could be Crystal Palace, who have dropped from the Premier League all the way down to the Vanarama National League South. And yet they still have more money than all the clubs we gave a billion pounds to. So I think the moral of the story is just don't invest 24 million pounds in non-league football clubs. What you should do instead is flip the football league system on its head. So non-league clubs actually start in the Premier League and Premier League clubs start in non-league. To find out how that unfolds, give the video on screen a watch.